Next video is how changes in the exchange rate affect our group demand. So if the exchange rate goes down, you must, must remember that there's a fall in export prices and a rise in import prices. Okay, there's one of my students keeps on getting this wrong. This is not, this is an unforgivable mistake. You'll completely mess up your A-level economics. So if one pound is equal to two euros and one pound is equal to one euro, if the exchange rate falls and you want 10 quid back, previously with a high exchange rate, you would have had to sell your product for 20 euros and now you only need to sell it for 10 euros. So if you sell more exports and you buy fewer imports, that will then lead to a rise in aggregate demand. Okay, so this is one of the key things. So if the exchange rate goes down, there's an increase in aggregate demand. If you just go to an ordinary ASAD diagram on there, that will lead to an increase in economic growth, obviously. Hopefully this will improve the balance of payments and it will lead to a fall in unemployment. However, it will cause inflation immediately because the price of imports will in fact go up. Therefore, look at this diagram here. on here. The SRAS will shift from SRAS to SRAS dash and that will lead to a rise in inflation. However, even if the exchange rate falls, it may not be the case that the balance of payments will improve due to the Marshall Learner equation and the J-curve, which I think I've drawn on the next sheet. You remember the equation, the sum of export and import elasticities must be greater than one, then the balance of payments will improve. However, according to the J-curve effect, the Marshall Learner equation does not hold. Therefore, when you decrease interest rates, initially, uh, the balance of payments will get worse. If you think about it, if the price of oil imports goes up, we still want to buy the imports. So we will spend more money on those, on, on those imports. Eventually, though, the Marshall Learner Equation will hold, probably after about 18 months. So therefore, when the exchange rate goes down after 18 months, the balance of payments will hit zero, and eventually it will hit a positive phase. However, in the UK, we've had a low exchange rate for years and years and years, and we still have a trade deficit. Part of that is because of deindustrialization. Remember the figures I always quote to you, 1992, 20% of our GDP was made up with the manufacturing sector. Sorry, 1992, yes. And by the year 2022, that figure is now 10%. So if you remember Liz Truss's argument was all about low tax again, low corporation tax, lots of immigration, 1 million people coming in. That would then create growth. When we get growth, Therefore, the economy would start to take off. Low corporation tax would increase the FDI. Therefore, we would increase the underlying trend rate of growth. So it's also dependent, the balance of payments is also dependent upon supply side factors, obviously. Okay, 